All right, so I am on with the fabulous, brilliant Yu Tsai, who is a fashion celebrity foodie photographer, because first of all, his whole food life is my life. I wish I could cook. Um, and thank you for coming on to One Live. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you for having me on this special time. It's And it's nice to be asked to be part of the show instead of hosting your show. So pressure <laughs> off me and off you. <laughs> But I want to say that, that congratulations again and again for your Thank creativity. You. And I know your history, how long you've worked in the industry. People often think, oh, surprise, here comes a new designer from the Bronx. You worked for mm -hmm. a very long time to be where Thank you are. You. And I do want to say this again, I said it earlier, for those who just joined us. I know we all say, oh, congratulations to your amazing work. Oh, Beyonce wearing it. We're going to change that dynamic. We're going to change our paradigm, how we discuss it as artists. Our job, it truly our passion is to work really hard to create what we create. And Absolutely. it is their blessing, and it's their blessing to have the opportunity to recognize our work and recognize your work and wear it. So congratulations to Beyonce. <laughs> the <laughs> me. the queen. I ain't gonna take she that title away, but you know She's what? <laughs> the queen recognized today. Recognized. Yes, I'm so grateful for that opportunity. It was life-changing. It's part of history. It's beautiful. It was a powerful empowerment for myself and for other people of color, right? And um, yeah, thank you, Beyonce. Thank you, Zarina. Thank you, Quazy. Thank you, all of Parkwood. And thank you, too, for being on here. One of the things that we're going to dive into this conversation, I think it's important to yeah. mention, mention of people of color. And by the way, guys, I'm people of color, just so everybody knows. Yes. Okay, so set that premise first. So as we get into the discussion, people won't be like, you're not black. Well, I consider myself part of the community. You're a person of color. You. Right. All right. Exactly. Just, just putting that out there. <laughs> but I want to say this now. Because of movement that's happening, because of climate that's evolving around us, that the, the, the black community are reaching out and support black artists and support black yes. talents and so much so the white community have woken up and do the same but i want to yes. say this i want to say this is really important i learned this from alfonso from um human rights uh campaign president is that these opportunities are out there and the people of color are asking for equal opportunity you did That's not it. get hired because you're black you've been working forever and ever, and she wore your clothes and your collaboration with Adidas before the hashtag, a trending, I can't believe it's a trend, a uh, hashtag Black Lives Matter, because it's not yeah. a trend. Fashion, talent is not a trend. You know, color should not be a trend, and that's, At I all. Think worked out when we start talking about this, but that's really important to say, because you are not all of a sudden a part of a hashtag that you're part of this branding process for her. It right. is part of your DNA, and she has celebrated you independent of your yes. But how amazing it is to recognize that she does support the community, she supports you. Naturally, and too, you know? And I think that's the conversation, right? Let's start with that, right? How, how is it to, for you to, like, when you're casting, for example, to find the authentic kind of diversity and then making sure the, the energy is flowing. Like, how important is that for you? Well, this goes back a little bit. As an Asian American growing up in Terry Hall, Indiana, which Whoa. is only one other person of color in my school, and uh, his name was Jamal, so you can guess he was black. All right, and he was he black. Was my best friend, and he had sure. an afro this big. And as, a, as a person who came to this country, did not speak any English at all. He was the only person that reached out to me and befriended me, right? So that was my, my culture of understanding that color do collectively together and support each other. But please remember, when you don't speak the language, you don't know what racism is. True. You don't know when somebody calling you a chink, chunk, wing, whatever, all these names. Yes. You just, smile you just know they're acknowledging you, right? No, thank you. Yeah, oh, thank I you so much. You. You recognize yeah. me, whatever you're saying, because we did yeah. not know. It wasn't until years later, even my cousin who spoke perfect English and who grew up in this country that was shepherding us along at YMCA camp when we were young, would laugh with the people who were teasing us because they don't know better, they were young. But mm -hmm. we laughed with them because nobody said, oh, when they call you chink, they're actually degrading you as a human being, right? Mm -hmm. But somewhere in that mix of not understanding Gave me a power and strength not be hurt by them. 
That's right? the, that's the thing, because when you give that power to them, it's a whole other thing. It's a whole other thing. So the reason I want to mention that going all the way into fashion, because I was working as a biologist before fashion. Oh, sweet. I was a field life biologist. I want to be a veterinarian, and there's no racism in animals, just so you know. They eat each other when they want to breed, and they kill each other <laughs> to be to a topic right. that has nothing to do with color. So, <laughs> again, I wasn't in a world that ever even dealt with race, racism. And yes, stereotype is Asian people, scientists, done. Mad. <laughs> right. However, it wasn't until I stepped my foot into the world of fashion mm. and celebrity in the world of Hollywood, when I actually then recognize what racism means. And we cannot talk about diversity without talking about racism, right? Let's go. Because uh, you, you wouldn't know what diversity is unless you realize that there's racism that we need to bring diversity. Because I'm from yeah, a country systematic that everybody, too. We're yes. everybody's the same color, right? Yeah. And we, we, we have our own colorism for sure. Don't get out in the sun because you'll look like a rice picker. <laughs> you know, you know, you, you work, you go out there and you work in the field, that's why you're dark. So stay under the shade. Well, my skin tone has always been dark when I was born. And Ooh. when I was little, people said, oh, he's like a black baby. And again, I, was that supposed to be negative? To me, it never meant that. It, it's just like, right. oh, you came from a poor family. You were left out in the, you know, the rice paddy while mommy and daddy went pick rice, and then you came back and picked you up. So those are the stories that we get, and yes. this kind of story happens from India all the way to Thailand, all the way to even South in Asia. even in African American culture. You know, the colorism is very, very big. You know, like how dark you are versus how light you are, or you know, it's the same. It's the same formalities. Like, oh, you're you worked in the field and you are a you were a slave. Or, your ancestors were a slave. Whereas, you know, so like, it's so funny because growing up, my grandfather is a very dark skinned man. I love my granddad, he's so cool. Um, but I, because my family, my grandmother was fair like you, right? On both sides of my family, like, <laughs> somebody said I'm fair. You're fair <laughs> compared to this black boy. So, like, so it was just so interesting because. My mom, my aunts, they were all chocolate. And then on my dad's side, everyone was like light skinned. And so this whole idea of me being darker was always a thing for me. I've always wanted to be darker. So I tanned. I used to be lighter, so now I'm dark. So <laughs> I always love that onyx skin. Like, like I always have a... <laughs> um, Ebony. No, Ebony, uh, yes, Ebony, you know. I love that so, longer tone of purple. That's what... Mm, purple, purple is a color of royalty. That's that yes. color. <laughs> That's the color. But, so, you know, it's all about how you see color, right? Yeah. How you see perceived so, color. So when I got into the world of fashion, as you know, you start out in the low bottom tier magazines and people think, oh, you shoot for that, gen that, that regional magazine and that's mm. prevalent in a highbrow. And that's you work your way up. You know, you just right. slowly work your way up. And I remember back then, Harper Bazaar Mexico, before they're mm. the Harper Bazaar Mexico today, it was like, right. oh, you know, that's Mexico. Harper's. Do that. Uh, you, yeah. you, you can go shoot that and build your portfolio as you go. And again, to me, I didn't understand that that if you get a white girl on the cover of Harper's of Mexico, whoa. Of course, I'm like, I'm shooting Harper's of Mexico, my first cover. I want Linea. Harper's Bazaar. Do you right. remember Linea Dominguez? Do you remember? Yeah, her? yeah. Lady uh -huh. model from Chihuahua. Beautiful. Oh. Uh -huh. <laughs> So I'm like, can we shoot her? And the magazine goes, well, she's great, but she's all people. We would love to have, like, you know, a white person. Oh, like, no. But this, this is the conversation you, you know. We have these conversations yeah. on runways. We have these conversations. But ultimately, they actually agreed that should be the model that we should shoot. And they celebrated her cover when she looked amazingly gorgeous. I think the model amazing. agency that Ali actually was a, I, I won when I got the model to, to oh. shoot because nobody mm -hmm. believed in me at that time. And I have to say one management reason I'm here, guys, because when I first started doing photography, it requires one person to believe in you, one agency to believe in you and give you models to shoot. Because no matter what talent I have, I, I end up shooting animals, for God's sake. If I don't you know, right. like really plants and apples, <laughs> whatever, right. I'm still a photographer. But one model management was a singular agency that gave me models to shoe and build my entire career. So I want to thank you guys for that. 
for always been the first to believe in me. And Ali was there as an agent at the time. And so Lilia Dominguez, having that moment, it's like your defining moment in your design journey, right? It defined me. But do that moment, I also then realize the color is on the cover of magazine and what that meant. And I became very aware of it, right? And I became part of the problem. Right. Like, hey, guys, I'm looking for models and I'm looking for white girls. A white girl. It's, it's a thing. We get brainwashed when you get in there because you know what you need to pr produce and you know what they're asking for and you know what's going to... It's this weird thing that happens, you know? You know, and I got back the other day. And we're getting like, excuses, right? We're like, oh, it's yeah. because that's what the magazine wants. What they need. What they that's want. what they need. And at that time, it's before social media, before a platform. So we didn't have a voice. We cannot complain and nobody will ever listen. So you do and you did. You follow that system. We talk about that stuff. Yeah, the great weapon. Right? Yep. As, as the, so during that time, as I grew as a photographer, I was so blessed to work with brands like Apple. I came from commercial Ooh. side first before I became fashion. That's important to mention that. Because Apple is what taught me what Benetton really means. When I became part of the creative team with Apple and shooting their brand, I was the singular photographer that changed from the silhouette dancing picture where we don't recognize yeah, people, uh -huh. to lifestyle brand where we started showing skin color. We started showing oh from God. here down to recognize people of shape. They were the first, believe it or not. Dope. They were the first before fashion people even start thinking that way. And we had billboards everywhere just from here to here showing these little iPads clips and phones. Remember that? And how yep. they dressed, what they were wearing, defined them. Amazing. And you can see the skin tone on the skin. But all that was thought out through the incredible team of Steve Jobs. They came to me, they're like, listen, we want you to shoot fashion. I go, I haven't shot a single fashion image. Goes, no, no, that's what we want. We want your, the knowledge of understanding of cultural differences. And I want you to be able to shoot this little and tell me who that person is and what they represent and what culture. You know, mm. there they come from so we shot for african region we shot for asian region and it's such Amazing. an interest you know crazy as, you know as a designer a little lift of his collar changes everything but this was about showing here the thickness of the lip the chin the skin tone the hand wow. the, the texture it it that's when i realized how important it was for me to carry that messaging throughout my rest of my career whoa so my second campaign um I had a, I, I, I was, I'm very blessed. The, the type of project I got, I was really blessed. I, long story short, I ended up shooting for, I'm working for guests. And I'm not only a photographer at that time, I was a creative director. So the okay. first action I took was, if you want me to shoot for this brand, I want an Asian model on the billboard. Very important, yes. And can I, I tell mean, you guys? Sure. Since that beforehand, there was not a single Asian model. So crazy. This industry is crazy. And it's so crazy. And we did it. We shot it. And they shot the Asian girls for two more years. And all of a sudden, it's not hashtag trend anymore for the moment. And now we just see white girls again. Right. So those are kind of the conversation. Yes. So you asked me a question. How do I feel about diversity? With anger. With, with, yeah. with extreme passion and extreme anger, because it, it is it is so hard to have these conversations when you're casting. With agencies, when you send out a package and you said to them, I want XYZ breakdown and I want an African-American model. Here's another problem we begin to have. If there are African-American model, black model, or Asian model of color, there's such a small pool of people. And then- That is what people need to know. Like. As a designer, I was requesting, begging agencies for girls of color, Latina, black girls, African, because you know, black, you know, you mix it, you know what I mean? Asian. And so my first season, um, I got a nice array of girls. Um, however, you know, like as it went on, I had to scout on the street for girls. And I was like, it's so messed up. Like I'm pay, I'm trying to pay these girls. I would have paid them like my little two hundred dollars per girl, whatever I could get in the package. But I was never receiving any black girls. So it was such a frustrating thing at the time as a designer, which is part of the reason why I stopped. 
And when I say there's no black models in Asians representation, there's very few, and those very few, they keep it very exclusive because they only spend that much small amount of time to build those models. Build them up waste any time we call them waste right to do commercial yeah. work or runway work or designer they or a new black you. designer <laughs> <laughs> oh you're uh, okay uh no no here are the girls in development all young white girls i was like okay well what about like you know and I, I understood that i understood that part that's why i said i need to build myself as a brand you know um wow but that's a whole powerful thing. thing is that I think that's for me, I begin to recognize that I can't count on them. Right. I can't count on them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the start. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I, know and I was about to say I, that. How right? do you, so now let's talk about the self branding thing because to me, you're a personal brand in your own right. Right. So how, so let's talk about the personal branding thing. Like you're just sure. like, how you went about that part? Well, important enough, what we need to mention is this, that uh, during the time when I was shooting, I, my, my inspiration and aspiration was Victoria's Secret Guest and Sports Illustrated. But so, you don't hear those words from people who want to shoot for interview Vogue and V Magazine, right? That's not what you say. And that, but that's what the, uh, whether it's ignorance or whether it's just because I just love celebrating beautiful, majestic women. Yes. And that was my thing. So by the way, again, it was not a trend. It was not a trend to shoot right. someone like Kate Upton. It was not a trend to shoot a curvy girl, a girl who had hip like Irina Shayk. It was mm. not a trend. Again. Shout out to Irina. We love you. We love That's you. Again. And again, I have to give one model management credit for this. There was one singular model that made me truly love fashion, and that was Envy. And reason for oh, this, I'll yeah. tell you a funny story. Envy was sitting on the roster at one. Mm -hmm. And my goal was, I want to shoot this girl. She was commercial enough to do all the amazing commercial work. And then she did Chloe campaign. And then she did Chanel. She was amazing. So when mm -hmm. I asked for that model, I remember this conversation. They're like, she's not ready. I go, what do you mean she's not ready? She's a top model. You know the reason? They said, well, she's a little bit overweight right now. Right? She's not the model ready. Right? She's not model ready. Mm -hmm. You know what I said at that time? I said, no, she's ready now. I want her when she's at her best, of a mm -hmm. best, full, beautiful. I want to celebrate her curve. And guess what? Right. V Magazine story, 10 pages with her and Eugene. And she was curvy. She's beautiful. Best. And that singular moment, I like to know, I like to, to hope that change the perspective of people understanding, oh, wait a minute. And V can be her and be in V? Then amazing the snowballing, then the arenas. Because I, you know, I found Alsa Haas at age of 16 when I was working for guests. It was all about taking these girls, just their hearts, was that one model. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nobody shot her, nobody believed in her. And was she ready? No, she wasn't a ready girl. But you know why? Because she wasn't ready, therefore I get to shoot her. Because which is the ready, best part. And with build. Else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I got them and I got them ready. I took them to Hawaii, I took them around the world and I Amazing. shot them and I celebrated them. And I have to say, because of them, what they did for themselves as a career grew, they celebrated with me and elevated mm. me as a brand that I celebrate curvy girls. And I'll tell you this, and I know one knows the story, a lot of model agency, if they're joining in, they hear this story. When I started shooting Kay Upton, I knew when she was 16. I really thought she was 18 because I want to make sure she doesn't get quote unquote harassed. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And we're not going to talk about that's a whole different subject, not the time. Oh, the world. <laughs> you can Google whatever. But mm -hmm. the point was that I can tell you, I have lists of emails of agents basically said to me, You're not a real photographer because you're shooting a fat girl. Why would you shoot that fat cow? And I'm saying this because this has been wow. already. And I love her. Like she, I went to a wedding, she's my sister, she's my, I mean, I love her. And from day one, I love what she was about. And again, as an Asian American, when I see that blonde hair Barbie doll, uh, people tell me she's not something, I'm like, oh, you're gonna be something because now I'm in, I'm in. You're gonna tell right. me I'm not gonna- Let's do it, put the work in. How many times you heard, if I'm from the Bronx, you're not gonna make it. If you're from the hood, and you're a black boy, you're a gay boy, you're not gonna make it. Well, I get that, you're an Asian guy who, who did not assist Steven Mazel, and you live in Los Angeles. Mazel, or, yep. 
and you're not like you know super thin and bitchy because <laughs> everyone wants that, that that whole attitude you know oh Ooh. you know what that industry attitude is disgusting and 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 it, thank god for now that there's a platform that we can have these discussions we can talk about them and it will take time to make that change. And I say that because the old people just need to leave. Change, the old <laughs> dog ain't gonna change. We just no. want them to leave. <laughs> right, I'm just saying, I'm, being, I'm for real. I am, it's I'm, so I'm, true. I'm, like, I'm like, well, like, thank you for changing. Thank you for stop bringing black models on. I'm not honey, just get out of that seat because you've been there too long. Let somebody else come right. in and do the right thing. We don't expect we good. get out. Get out. Take your social security, we good. <laughs> <laughs> what happens when I talk about diversity? So for me, <laughs> diversity wasn't just about color. I was really focusing on body positivity. And with Sports Illustrated teaming up shooting for them for 11 years, it was all about that. It was all about when I go on a trip, which girl is the curviest, I'll take that on because I want people to know I love that and I celebrate that. Because you know what, photographers out there, young photographers, if you get a perfect model, it is not that hard to do your job. Because that perfect model will even let you shoot her in a bad line. Bam, boom, you get boom, boom. On the set, she ain't going to stand in the ugly line and let you shoot her. But when you get a girl who's a little bit worried about her confidence and who's a little bit curvier that day than she usually is, then you become the photographer. You become the designer to make her feel good on set. That's and all job. Yeah. That's, that's all job. That's literally it. Right? That's your yep. job as a designer, right? You're designing for whether Beyonce or somebody's unknown, you look at their body and your job is truly about how do I celebrate you so you feel most Absolutely. Absolutely. We don't talk about that enough in this industry. We don't. We, don't. we were so self-driven and so much about, oh, um, I have a vision of this photography has to be this girl, has to be exactly this girl. I go, well, really? There's so many different languages. And she's bony. Right? And what's a skinny girl? So, so, and for me, and I'm, I'm, I'm not sure for you as a designer, because I don't walk that path, but for me, I took a conscious decision to go back to Asia and work. Because so, how many times I've heard that once you become successful in America, you don't need to go back to your third world country and shoot for those titles because nobody cares. How many times they tell you, oh, you can move on now. You're not just a black designers anymore you are now a legit designer so you should be dressing white people don't be don't worry about them listen so like my part of my legacy came from building the bronx you know so like and i always make sure i intertwine the bronx with everything i do whether it's working with a high-end brand or just shooting campaigns you know or whatever on my phone and i make sure that every time I walk into a room that you know and you feel the Bronx is present. You know what I'm saying? And it's, it's part of my legacy, it's part of my world. And I feed it, I force feed it to some people so that they know, don't try to change me. You know, like, I am who I am. I've worked really hard for it and for that respect. And I think if there's more people who stand their ground, like what you said, in this industry and not try to conform to these old ideas, we would have another conversation because it would be like, okay, who's next? What are you? We would want new energy, new blood to always come in. We have the old guards who are, I think are being pushed out now with this new cycle, honestly, um, that need to know that because they were part of the problem, you know? You know, which is why I'm returning back to fashion as a designer because I am going to let these folks know my perspective is still relevant, you know? So, and so, yeah, so everywhere I go, I try to make sure I represent and get back to where I came from because that's part of my DNA as a creator, you know? That's what makes me cool, you And know? also, I think in our world that when we work so hard, we forget our own color in a way, right? We just, we, I, I don't know if there's a, uh, a hate of self in, in the Black community because for me, for Asian community, we come here as immigrants and mm -hmm. then, First thing, I'm telling you, 99% of us try to assimilate so much that we don't want to be known as Asian. So many of us change our name to Americanized name, right? right. My name was Daniel for many years. Wow. Daniel? Who's that guy? <laughs> nice to right. meet you. But it took a friend of mine who was my editor at the time when I was directing TV commercials. And she goes, you know your work is so poetic as it's such an Asian esoteric way you, you talk about things. Why wouldn't you embody your name and be part of that brand? And I'm like, oh my God, 
I'm branding all these other people and I forgot. Hey, to, so we bring back about the brand. So first thing I had to do to build my brand is legally change my name back to Usai rather than Daniel Sai. <laughs> and, and that was number one, because then I embraced who I am. It took that much to go, all right, now you're going to know me before you meet me. You're going to yes. be meeting Usai. I don't have to pretend to show up and go, oh, no, 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 I'm not half white. Hi, yeah, like, I'm Daniel. You see what I'm saying? And it's also right. like, they oh, want that. Look, yes. look at my face. Oh, you look mixed. Are you mixed? You must be mixed. You're mixed? No, yes. I don't want that. I want you to know I'm made in Taiwan. Right? That's what I'm made. And <laughs> this is the Chinese blood running through my body. This is the culture that's within me. And then let me do what I do and bring what I understand. Let me bring my five spices to your work. Yes, your I love mind. that. And that, I think, began for me personally to really begin to understand what my personal branding is. And that's just not just be in front of the camera, right? That happens right. behind the camera as well. So when I made that conscious decision to go back to Asia and to work in Asia market, it's truly to celebrate and show people that, no, you're never so big that you don't Ooh. celebrate where you're from. You know, Asia the next top model, I've been doing for four seasons. There'll be another one coming. I know people keep asking, there will be amazing. Show, but we'll have another one. And I, and, even the network, it runs on Fox Network in Asia. They're like, oh, we didn't invite you the first two seasons because we didn't think you ever would come. I go, why? He goes, because you do an American version. Why would you ever come here? I go, for that very reason, I will sit here. I need to, I will, right. I will sit here. Okay. I will be representing whatever you guys, listen, when I'm in Asia, I'm American. That's what I see me, right? But <laughs> I'm in America, I want to be Asian. So, so, <laughs> so that, that becomes a conversation when Asian magazines started to work with me. And it's funny enough, again, they're like, oh, you're in America. Can you give me white girls? Can you give me white girls? Right? And then this is a deal I made with them. Sure. I'll, but I want to balance. You want me to show you white girls? Let me show a black girl on your cover. And you know how oh, fashion is in Asia? Oh, my God. <laughs> I was like, these are black girls. So that's like. <laughs> right? You know, like but it takes education and takes editor-in-chief like Harper's Bazaar Singapore um, that I've been, Kenneth Go that I have worked with for eight years, that looks at me and goes, you're absolutely right. Let's put Winnie Hollow on the cover. Not just on any black girl. Let's put Winnie Hollow on the cover. Let her have oh, the babe. first international fashion highbrow magazine. And God knows I have history with her on Top Model, by the way, it's reality show. Don't listen to anything of a reality show. Hey, that's a disclaimer. Thank you. Okay. Very now good. Very <laughs> now good. So, when we did that, all of a sudden, everybody realized, you know what? We need to follow. Because it takes people in position of editor-in-chiefs to yes. make those decisions for all of us to be able to actually spread our wings the way we want to. Because we've been clipped for how many years now? As a designer. Millennia. <laughs> a millennia. Um, right? Yeah. So that that's, part, that's my DNA. That's my brand. Yeah. And then through this time, I could not be more, it, it sounds so stupid, but I have to say it. I'm so grateful to have Miss J, my counterpart, oh. American Next Top Model, as my, my close BFF, because you know why? I needed some black education, you guys. <laughs> Miss J? When this thing starts to happen, we literally talk every night. And we call it checklist. Are you being racist to white, white Asian people? Am I being racist to black people when I say these things? You know why we did that? Because mm. both of us are so crazy and we say the stupidest shit around each other. <laughs> yeah. And we accept it because we're family. Yes. And through this time, we begin to have to learn what is, you know, maybe in our privacy, our own home that we're still I love to give each other. I, I, don't, I love that he calls me a little dumpling, but don't do it when you're out there buying dumplings. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Miss J, if you're on, we love you. Um, Miss J is actually part of the, speaking of Miss J, part of the reason why I actually shifted from baby fat. I know. You know, that's like, and from the Bronx, always, always supported me from the beginning. He was such a good friend even, with her as well, doing consultation work in the runways and casting. You guys have the, the best. Same. Yes. The same. It's so real, you know. The reason um, I want to tell you guys that story, so for the people of other of non-color people, when you want education, go find yourself a friend. Go right. find yourself a friend. And be as stupid as you want, need to be because you have to recognize you're dumb and stupid and ignorant because we've been taught that, not because you are, because education system have not 
teach us to not to have the communication. It's a one-sided system. That's right. You know? So if you can't get an education from Instagram, you know what? Get yourself a friend. Get, get yourself, yourself a good friend. friend. Get yourself like two or three friends so you can really get it all set in. different shades of justice in this whole thing. You know what I mean? You can get a whole flat the rock. But that was that was truly for me the, the the learning during this time. So how important is branding now? It's no longer about my photography, I have to be honest with you. It is about what I am doing and what people can be inspired by, but by but not by the end product. Mm. And this is a learning from another black person who called me out of my horrendous, crazy mouth of jokes I used to tell and used to say that everybody celebrate my because you know on set, we're in a bubble, guys. And photo shoots. We're literally a cone of silence, a bubble. Nobody talks about it, but we're as stupid as F. <laughs> and we tolerate it and we allow it. We're learning, all of us are learning and adjusting. So you can come for me if you want, but just so you know, we recognize our problem. Right. But somebody did hear something I said, not in a perfect context. The way I said it could have taken out a different way. Mm. Long story short, I had a conversation with him after. And he gave me the best lesson I could ever have. Because wow. I stood there on my high horse and said, how can you ever think I'm racist? I am not racist. I'm my friend's black block. And I, when I show up on photo shoots, I am colorblind. I'm colorblind. I don't mm. see the black person in front of me, yellow person in front of me, white people. I just want to celebrate them. That's right. my high horse I've been riding, right? I've been riding this horse for 15 years. And he goes, that's your problem. And that is the problem. You don't get to not recognize the skin color that you are shooting. And my skin crawls when I talk about this because it is such a crazy paradigm for me to learn that. And I had to stop. And I go, what? what? Wait, 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 wait. You mean two years of Essence Magazine covers? Over 30 covers? I, I... oh, you're right. Johnny, That's Johnny, very wow. brave of you. That is very, very brave of you to say that and to admit that because sometimes people just don't acknowledge it. They don't admit it to themselves and they try not to even acknowledge it. And that right there is profound. To even admit that and to say that and to share that and I appreciate that. But it was, but if we all can have that education from someone and trust me, it was hurtful because he posted something on the internet saying I'm racist, even bought up ANTM with Whitney Hollow. Again, reality show, don't believe everything you see in reality show. Um, you know, it was it was very really hurtful because he wasn't there. So we had this hour conversation and halfway through, I'm in tears. And he said, hold on. He went off and came back and said, I just took all the posts down. Now, I, I thank you for listening and hearing me. So I asked him at the end of the conversation, he goes, what can I do? As a photographer that I am, what can I do? And you know what mm. he told me? He goes, not what you can do. Know what you're doing. Little black girls and little black boys are watching you. They're watching you because they wish they can be in the blessed position that you have been given. Yes. So you get to show up and shoot all these amazing musicians and black artists and, and, and no, they're not celebrating that picture they put on the wall. They're celebrating you having the opportunity to be there. I, I mean, I can start crying now because it, it, it changed my life at yes. that moment. It made me realize I mean, that true. all that freaking fighting with agents, when is she available? I need this girl now. You know what? It don't matter to me anymore. Mm. It doesn't matter. What matters to me is how I carry myself through the process and what I deliver and what I am doing that I'm going to be proud of at the end of the day. And that little black girl and a little black boy, and I'm including the Asians of all colors yes. watching. Oh, yes. And I thank you guys for that. And one more thing I want to, I don't want to forget to say is this. For those of you guys that are out there, as we are calling everybody out for accountability of all the bad things you're doing, do me a big favor. Keep them accountable for all the amazing things they're doing. Gotta have both. Because if I would know, if some, it's not an excuse. If someone had told me 10 years ago, what you're doing is not about your art, it's about the journey and about little black boys, black girls, and, and little Asian boys, and Asian boys, girls watching you, maybe I would have been a different person. I don't know. I can't say so because I can't go back. However, I'm mm -hmm. glad it happened now. And I'm glad that this is a journey I am on. So every conversation I have, I want to make sure my brand is evolved around not being colorblind and recognizing. I love that. 
who we are. And I'm not saying white that. people, guys. White is still a color, so don't come for me. Say I don't care about you. I'm not talking. Yeah, about I don't you. care about white people. Oh, you don't <laughs> want to book white girls? That's always a thing. Yes, but it's not about um, that, right? You know, it's not. It's about not. opportunity. When I get to see a package of five white girls, five white girls, five I'm Asian, you know give me an Indian, but you know what I mean? Indian is Asian, but like, you know what I'm saying? If you give me a good diversity cast. Responsibility starts with people like one management, which they're doing, having curvy size models, have older models. Responsibility starts from the top. We absolutely. Absolutely are the foundation. They're the, they're the tip of the iceberg, but we are the base. We're, yes. the, we're the solid base that now we have a voice. So when I got invited to speak to you about this, I was so, so excited because you have an audience that I would love to reach and be able to hear that we collectively is solidarity. And, yes. and, and I want to thank the Black community so much because I did not recognize that until this time it wasn't for a Black lady named Tyra Banks. And I know you guys think I'll shout fears and, and fears and that <laughs> and she cuckoo and all, but you know what? That woman's all about brand. That woman's all about celebrating diversity. And without her, this little Asian gay boy would not be on Nimbrook television. Amen. You know, and without that, and without someone like Ashley Graham, who was white, but you know, she understood diversity. I mean, her husband's hot black guy. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> side tangent, back to the reality. <laughs> that that made sure on the panel of American Beauty Star and Sir John being the mentor, that, he, yes. that she can look across the panel and goes, two white girls, I'm white. No, 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 you're not putting a white guy in the middle of a panel. And I want somebody who qualifies. That's so important conversation to be had. I don't want to get the job because I'm color. I want the opportunity to have the job, but I want to qualify. Because I don't, yo, sometimes it's like, Book that person. That's the only black person we can find or Asian person. Just book them. No, it should be, I. my work speaks for itself. I have the work ethic. I know what I'm doing. And I think that's where, you know, that's what we have to educate people to, to remember too, the uh, people who are not of color. It's not just the one you find off the corner or the street. <laughs> There's so many different elements to a person of color that you should know, you know, like the work ethic is there. The, the the eye is there. Make sure all these elements that you actually look for in a person who's not of color is present because it is there. Sometimes it's even more so. And, and, another, and, and another another example I can mm -hmm. give is, is that as a community, you can really celebrate each other and support each other. Yes. And I'll give this nod to Winnie Hollow, for example. When we're shooting Harper's Bazaar, Harper says, you know, they have a list of hair and makeup people they want to use. And you know what? She's like, no. Person of color. <laughs> I want a black girl to do my hair. I don't care. She never had a cover in her life, but this is my girl, and I will not show up unless she does. Now, you can call her a diva if you want, but you know what? Yeah. It's not that. It's the fact that she knows. She has to She has mm -hmm. earn her position to be where she can celebrate her own community. And boy, did that woman do so the hair. The hair was incredible on that shoot, but there was mm -hmm. a fight. There was a pushback. And then yeah. he said, well, can we say, oh, we don't want the white guy to do her hair because he won't know black hair. That's not, the, that's not what we're talking about. There are a lot of right. amazing hairstyles while well, white, color, different colors. Who could do, do hair. hair. Right. But it's because she is celebrating someone who's been with her. To, I think he's, she's actually from, like, from um, Compton. You know, like, opportunity, like Bronx, opportunity don't give to these white, yes. beautiful women Bronx out there. Game. Because when Miss J comes into town, when he gets his hair braided, he's like, somebody drive me to Compton. I'm like, oh, I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but, but that's, so you understand that culturally, it's so important that when we have the platform, as you grow as an artist, a photographer, designer, whatever you guys are listening out there, take your team with you, celebrate yes. them with you. Don't climb over them. And I'm saying that for my own community, an Asian community, it's very rare they celebrate each other mm. you know only time they did is crazy rich asians okay i love that movie okay <laughs> <laughs> I love movie, so. <laughs> but, but, yes i get it <laughs> i understand but but I, these are learning for me because i'm saying this is not because i'm on a high horse like i know all this stuff no i learned this through this time because we we are in the 
insulary, isolary space in a fashion right. and beauty world. And we work in this space that we often forget what's most important, which is humanity. Truly. Truly. Yes. We do. And if this is a period for us to really be able to have these kind of conversations, because we're busy working. When are you and I are ever going to be able to connect like this? It's really I know. Rare. You know, it's very rare. And yeah. no, a double tap of a like to someone is not enough. It's not. You know, it really isn't. Accountability. Dear them. Just give them a thank you. You don't understand how much that does for people during this yeah. time. The amount mm. of DM I got from having this conversation with you and celebrating this moment with you, it, it just <laughs> warms my heart. So Same. Much. I was like, yes, we got a little thing happening. And then we get on and it breaks out five times. It's all good because we're on, baby. We're on. We're on. <laughs> no, I really do. Um, I really do appreciate you coming on. It's like such an amazing conversation we're having. I mean, I we, can we can have a, we can have a, I can't let you go. 10 hours, you know what I mean? We yeah. can talk forever. We can have another one anytime you want. But no, no. I, I, I know I answered your question in a long, big way. Answer like all my questions. I like wrote them down. <laughs> and we have, it kept rolling. I was like, that's what I'm talking about. That's, but I didn't hit this one thing. Hit it. Street to Kitchen Asia. Oh, uh, thank you for bringing that up. So, all people who follow, Asia, so, I love that. So one of the things that I truly wanted to do was for people to see the true me. In the fashion world, you know, we post this picture with celebrity and we're all happy and we're all together and it's all great. But one thing that people did not know is that I am an immigrant. I came to Terry Hill, Indiana, and my dad was a photographer, but because of language barrier, he could never be a photographer in the United States. So he worked in the kitchen as a dishwasher. You know, this is the story that wow. happens for so many immigrants. And I, when I realized that story would inspire so many others, I wanted to create a show that people actually get to see the real me. And celebrating food has always been in our culture. And I have a lot of aunties, they all named Auntie Sue. So <laughs> I was like, Auntie Sue, give me a recipe. I have like five Auntie Sue, and they all give me recipes. And I grew up in a kitchen, you know, and and I love cooking. And people always say, oh, you should cook for me. But I never thought a cooking show would happen. But when I was in Asia creating the show for working with Asia's Next Top Model, and I was part of producing team for that. And one of the sponsors, I said, you know, we really, really want to create another show around you. What would you want to do if we had an opportunity? And I said, well, funny enough, I have a treatment that, you know, a pitch that I've been sh shopping around the United States. I shopped it in the US. Wow. Like, all knows. Of course. All knows. Netflix, America. All of it said no, because they couldn't understand why would a fashion photographer, which they only know me for, right? Mm -hmm. would, would be able to talk to cook and be able to talk about culture and we're able to deliver heart in this box. That's it. That's what they want. So, so I, I was able to, my sponsor, Subaru Asia, Subaru Asia, thank you very much. They have been so supportive. They love the concept that I go back to my, where my roots is, Taiwan. To, to really revisit the culture and celebrate the journey of travel and, and cook. Now, yes, it's like Anthony Bourdain's show, but one thing's really different is that I get to really revisit the path I walked all the way to where I used to walk to school with my grandmother, who was 100 oh years old on the last episode she came on. And, and also for me, it was going back to celebrate my own culture and learning. I don't know how many times I cried on that show, but I did. Because it was truly learning about who I am all over again and be proud of who I am. And right. when Fox Asia saw it, they celebrated it, they loved it. And Net Geo Asia also picked it up and run it all summer last year. And we we're ready to shoot second season when this whole Yay! thing happened. So second season's <laughs> on the dim green light because of this. We'll see when it'll come back. But that show, what was most important for me wasn't about the journey, it was about taking the time to actually get back. So every episode, I cook for the people yeah. that comes on the show. So at each end of the episode, I create a dish, whether it's- I'm flying to Asia. <laughs> well, you okay. know, I'll come to you when this is over and I will make you dishes that you will absolutely love. I, I love food. I was like, love food. Come on. You know, I love food and travel. So you if like you need a little black boy, I love hot sauce. My hot sauce is coming. 
I wouldn't I'm, say oh, it's a rat. I know when, you know the name the hot sauce? Only right. crack sauce. <laughs> <laughs> because it is like crack and nobody can stop eating it. And there's a funny thing trying to register that name. It was tough. The government's like, crack? What is a crack? Like, I want to call it the crack house. They're like, <laughs> <laughs> no way. This is not, this is, this is, this is not true. Can't do that. Oh my gosh. But you know, I, wow. but all, all joking aside, I think for people who are inspired by you and people inspired by, by our journey as other artists, take the time and learn about their past. Absolutely. Because without our past, without being in the world of white people in Indiana and having an only friend that is Black, I wouldn't be the person that I am today. And, I, and without you being, being raised in the Bronx and having all the trial and tribulation that you have, that you will not be the person today. There's a phrase that people always say, you know, um, these turmoils make you stronger. Mm. I want you to remember one thing, and this is my personal, personal ethos I live by. Those things did not make you stronger. You were strong enough to handle those things. I want you to change that dynamic. That is so important because I hate that. Oh, you didn't have this, you didn't have that, but you know, make your skin thicker. My skin is thick enough already. Okay. It's thick. It's titanium. I was born with this strength. I was born with this confidence. You just didn't give us the opportunity to show you. So, show it. And here you are. So, yes, congratulations to Beyonce. Congratulations to any artist that was well, to you. close. And congratulations to them to be able to recognize your work. That, Thank you. If we can change that paradigm, right? Yeah, we're not creating anyone. We're celebrating with you, whether it's a cover magazine shoot, whether it's casting, whether it's just be able to say, I embrace you. you. And I'm, yes, my sample size may not fit you, but I'm going to make it work for you. You're going to squeeze that bad boy on you. It's okay to say that. You know, Mm -hmm. how many times you cast, you know, our responsibility with casting, we're like, "Uh, can she be at least size two? You know what? We ha- we- I try for a four. I like to. I like a good four girl. I like so a four girl. I'm saying that because we are part of the problem. We, we are. are part of the problem, absolutely. But yeah. because of one management, because Craig at the agency, people like like you guys, thank you guys, wanting to listen and wanting to give us the opportunity to say we were wrong, and we will start making those changes. Is how change will happen. Absolutely. You know, that's that. I celebrate with you. And I can't wait for the day that you and I actually get to celebrate our art together. And with that, I cook for you. And eat. And you get to eat my food. (laughs) That's the world that we need to be in. Absolutely. I'm going to be in LA at some point, probably early next year. So So I'll visit. So what's crazy is that I'm flying out tonight. I changed my flight so I can do this talk. I was supposed to fly out this morning and I wanted to be here with you. and, And I fly out red eye tonight and I land and I jump into a shoot, a cover shoot. For a September issue, and then I jump right back on the flight the same day to come home. It's because, because I'm trying to avoid the 24 hour stays so or I get trapped. Mm-hmm. You, you can do, yeah, quick politics, quick in and out. But I, I, I want to talk to you again and again. I think there's gonna be a crossover. I talk so much, you can just tell me to shut up, but you gotta come no, on. I love it. We, we can have a weekly like dialogue on this, it goes forever because wait, yes. The, the, the systemic racism within all fashion industry, it goes deeper and deeper than roots that you know. And it, it is shameful. It is, I, I'm part of the problem and we try to make those changes. And, and I want everybody to know this is that, in fact, it's brands like Coca-Cola, brands are mm. consumer brands when fashion people think commercial word means bad, right? They're the one actually provide the opportunity to have diversity. Diversity, they have the funds. And when we did Coca-Cola campaign, like you said, I'm going to echo you, we couldn't find enough people of color and diversity. We did street casting. 10,000 people show up like American Idol, line up along the streets of the building. For what? For little amount of money that was being paid. But you know what it was? It was the brand celebrating them. It became a whole huge documentary we ended up doing. People were break dancing. People were juggling. People were like, I'm like, dude, guys, it's not a talent show. <laughs> right. This is not a talent. <laughs> you know what was weird? That year, six years ago, when we casted 12 people for that campaign, 
out of the 12 people, the 10 people all have their own TV show on network. Mega stars. That, the reason that. I tell that story is you guys do not dis get discouraged out of those 10 thousands of thousands of people we cast. When you stand out, when you have the confidence, because that's what we were casting. They were not models, guys. They were not models. They stood in line with everybody else, and we look and we cast them. We talk to them. They bought their A game. They bought the star power, and that's what really what you guys out there have to do. Whether you're designing, oh, really? whether you're shooting, show up with your confidence and show up because we all have platform now, guys. We all have a platform. Celebrate who you are. You know, just celebrate it. I love it. Well, thank you for having me on. Technically, I'm on your thing now. <laughs> <I know. laughs> I, I'm so it's amazing. No, no um, this was wonderful. It was so informative. It was fun, and I can't wait to do this again. Like and we, we gotta make sure. You know I'm gonna be on your DMs. Like you know what I love that when I I'm gonna throw this in. I, what I loved about being invited to this show is that. Like a lot of the show on my show, it gets a little darker and I start crying and it's about like injustice and all. But guys, we can talk about this with a smile on our face. Not because we're because we're gonna Absolutely. celebrate the positivity that can come out of it. And that's that's tea time, tea time, tea time. Cheers, tea time, spill the tea. <laughs> <laughs> but truly that that's this is this is love to me, right? This is the opportunity to be able to to recognize what we can do differently. And yes, some of the stuff is hurtful, but right. Joy, kindness, please everyone. It it will lead the way to the passage of change. And and, and Always. you, you, your smile, your brand, what you Both. represent, and what you do. I am honored to be here with you today. Absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for participating. And I'm just really grateful. Again, I'm just great shit, period, you know? So so blessed. We are absolutely blessed. Absolutely. Yes, we are. And thank you. Everyone, make sure you follow. Yes, follow us. Go to Street to Kitchen Asia if you want to look at food I make. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you, thank you, thank you for all my heart. And thank you, One Management, for, for making this possible, you, making this conversation open and 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 honest and and and, and edited. <laughs> and edited. <laughs> And, and and I see that so many of you have joined in and I appreciate it so much. We'll keep the conversation going because that's how we're going to educate ourselves and, and grow. So, Absolutely. Thank you so all for that. supporting all the followers, all the supporters. Um, thank you, Sai, for coming on. Thank you, Juan, again. And yeah, we did it! <laughs> Until we see each other again, everyone. Have a good day. Cheers, guys. Bye-bye.